Hello there. Before I start droning about something irrelevant, no, I shouldn't be short selling myself like this. Before I start uh, sharing with you the unbelievably important knowledge I have gathered in the experiment I'm going to describe, I have a question. How do I make it that the ring lamp isn't visible as a reflection in my glasses because that's been annoying me as I was setting up the camera to record? If you have an answer, please, in the description, write something or whatever. Anyhow, uh, as I already noted, uh, there is a genre of YouTube videos which can be summed into hub sound videos because for some reason they are popular because, I don't know, people like loud hubs. However, there is a problem there. In, although you're supposed to take what sort of a sound that hub is going to produce, you can't really compare two different videos because even if the author is the same, the experiment he or she conducted is going to be different because obviously the microphone is a different place or the sensitivity has been set in a different manner or even uh, the, uh, the wheel has been spun to a different rotational speed. And that's been bothering me for some time so I decided to set up an experiment on my own. Essentially I created a jig to which I'm going to mount uh, my wheels, eight of them, and I'm going to spin them to the same constant uh, velocity, uh, rotational velocity, and I'm going to stop the cassette and measure the intensity of the sound using a very simple application on my phone. Now the setup is very simple, there is a, a speedometer which I have uh, converted to a rotational, uh, rotational speed meter, and there's a going to be a phone, I'm going to be doing something like this. I'm going to spin the wheel to a rotational speed of approximately 150 uh, rotations per minute. I'm going to hold the cassette and I'm going to uh, record uh, the intensity of the sound as it is produced or as it is measured by, uh, by my phone. And well, let's see what happens. So let's start.
Alright, and so what are the final thoughts about the entire experiment? First of all, I would like to know what sort of device is making that angry hard drive sound because I've been hearing it for some time now and I don't think I have a working server farm anywhere here. Two, uh, the experiment wasn't precisely uh, scientific because, well, my jig, my, the apparatus I used was kind of flimsy using just two pieces of wood. So, uh, it was moving when I was mounting different wheels, so the distance from the free hub to the, to the phone was somewhat different. However, the magnitude should be more or less, well, in line for each hub, so that's it. And the second thing is that I didn't use a professional sonometer that was calibrated by professional people who calibrate sonometers. I used an, a smartphone, well, microphone, which was calibrated by people who make iPhones and other kinds of, well, phones. So it's not really a scientific measurement, but it's going to give us some, well, food for thought or some hook into the future. All right, so let's talk about the results first. First of all, we need to understand that the decibel scale is logarithmic, which means that if a uh, volume of a sound goes up by 10 decibels, it means that 10 times more power was used to create that sound. Now this is important because if you are uh, chasing those minute gains, marginal gains, whatever, if you're chasing those tiny tiny bits of performance, you want your hubs to be as silent as possible because, well, a loud hub means high energy loss. Shimano is very consistent when it comes to volume of its hubs because most of them are about 40 decibels give or take one or two, so that's a quite a bit difference, but nonetheless, very consistent. Uh, two uh, of the same hub of a different, well, branding, not necessarily to produce the same sound. You saw this with the Novatec, uh, because one was branded by a different company, it was a different model year, but essentially it was the same hub. But one was 40 decibels, or 44, I think, and the other one was 30, so much less, uh, well, wasteful and, well, working pretty much uh, the same. You would note that the loss of energy, or the volume of a sound produced, isn't really uh, all that dependent on the rotational speed, uh, because once a hub reached maximum volume, it would stay at that volume, only the frequency of the sound would be increased, which is quite interesting, to be honest. However, uh, only when the rotational speed of the wheel dropped below a certain threshold, uh, the volume of a sound was dropping. Interesting, probably not really relevant. The X-Cobra hub is extremely noisy. And by extremely, I mean at 62 decibels, it was quite deafening to hear from about 20 or 30 centimeters. So, if you want something loud, obviously you should buy one. Unfortunately, I don't have a uh, the meme, the popular noisy hubs, which is Hopes. I don't have an, uh, one at this point. Or Chris Kings or Industry 9s to test, so I can't really uh, show you the volume they have. And even if I did get one, I probably couldn't reproduce my experiment, so... Well, there you go, you'll have to live with it. I think this is all I have to say about this subject, so... Thank you for your undivided attention. Thank you for wasting 10 minutes of your life, because I... So guess that this video is going to be about 10 minutes. I hope to see you in the next one. If you have something to say, feel free to use the comments. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I think I got lost again in my shilling. See you in the next one.